this is a brief overview of your IDE. We're going to start by making a new project here. We'll come up here, File, New, Multi-Device Application with C++. Everything I'm going to show you should work pretty much the same across all projects, application types, etc. But we're going to go ahead and use a tabbed template here just to get things going. I'm going to give it a folder name to save this in. And here we're presented with our design surface surrounded by four panels. The first panel here is the project group. The project group shows us all the files in our project and lets us interact with some of the project properties. Our main form here, we'll rename this main form, is actually made up of three different files. The first file here is the C++ source code, and then we have the header and the FireMonkey design view. You can change between these different files down here at the bottom using these tabs as well. When we add a new file to our project, we'll add a new multi-device form. We'll see it's added here with its respective files, but we'll also notice a new tab at the top. So we can use these tabs at the top to switch between these different forms. And we can also change to the code view here, go back to the main form, and it's still in the design view. The advantage of having tabs at the top and tabs at the bottom is this keeps your code, header, and design view together no matter how many forms or code files you have opened in your project. The next panel here is the tool palette. We can use the tool palette to add controls to the design surface. It's searchable, so you can drag and drop, or you can just select it and hit enter to drop it on the form. Once you have controls on the design surface, you can grab them and move them around to interact with them here. But for maximum control, you're going to want to come over here to the object inspector, where you can set the properties for these controls. One property of note is the style lookup. The style lookup lets you customize which style element is applied to the current control. This gives you a huge amount of customization in your user interface and can actually adapt to different platforms without the need to write code or redesign it for different platforms. So we'll come down here and select the style one apply of the next button. And then we'll notice here that when I switch my preview style from Windows to OS X, that all of these change. And again, we can preview this on Android. Now I want to show you something here. Pay attention to the position of these tabs when I switch over to iOS. Notice the tabs switch to the bottom. The reason the tabs switch to the bottom is Apple says that your tabs should be at the bottom according for their design specs. Meanwhile, the other OSs say that the tabs should be at the top. The reason they do that automatically is because the tab position property of the tab control is set to platform default. This is just one example of the way the platform services and the smart styles can keep the consistent look and feel that's specific to each platform without you needing to write code or design different UIs for each platform. Now, sometimes you'll find it's necessary to customize your user interface for a specific platform, and that's where the views drop down here comes in handy. From here, we can select a different view. So like, let's say we want to create a view specific for Android 4-inch phones, we just select that. And now we can customize this view and this will only be applied to Android. So we can change the text of this to say Android. Now we go back to the master view. We'll see it still says title here. So you'll notice we've created a customized view. This customized view only contains the differences between the master view and this view, which in our case is just changing the text of the title. We can create as many of these customized views as we want, and this gives us the ability to maximize the flexibility and customization of our UI across the platforms without the need to recreate it for each platform. One note is that selecting views or selecting preview styles is different from target platforms. Right here is where you select which target platform you want to deploy to. The last panel I'm gonna show you here is the structure panel. The structure panel shows you how each of the controls are parented on the form. And you can also select controls from here and move them to a different parent. So I'm gonna move this label over to tab item two, and there it is.
Now when you're ready to write some code, all you need to do is select Control and come over to the Events tab from the Object Inspector and find the event you want to respond to. So in this case, we'll select on click and double click, and now we just write our code in here. And then we can come down to the bottom and go back to the design view again. One great thing about creating multi-device applications is that we can easily preview this and prototype this on the Windows platform for the fastest possible turnaround time. So I come up here and hit the Run Without Debugging button, and of course we need to save off our new unit we added. And in no time at all, our application is running here on Windows. Notice it still says Title because we didn't create a custom view for the Windows platform. And we see that our functionality is working the way we expected it to. So now we can come in here and select a different platform to deploy to and specify which device. So we want to go Google Glass, Moto 360, or Nexus 6. Or we can select an iOS device or OS 10. There are two different buttons here when it comes to running. There's Run Without Debugging, which is what you're going to use most often, and Run. Run actually runs with the debugger attached, which is what you'll use when you're wanting to collect debug information. Also, you want to be aware of your build configurations over here, where you'll specify either Release, which is what will build a binary like will be deployed to an end-user device, or Debug, which is what you'll use when you have the debugger attached. The last thing I want to show you here is the search box. This is an incredibly powerful feature that allows you to quickly navigate and search your entire IDE. So we can use this to search for a control on our form, like Edit 1, and notice it's selected on the design surface for us. Or we can use it to add a new control, like the camera component, or to navigate to a screen in the IDE, like the SDK Manager, all from the search button. This has been a quick overview of your IDE. As you explore it and use it, you'll discover a lot more things that you can do with it.